I'll start with Marilek Hoffman. Um, let's um, before we talk about you know the 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 meat of the story here and and why we're doing this. Um, talk to me about your um, your vision for Jacksonville Beach and um, you know how the, how we're only a couple of days removed from the election. So what's the feeling like now that you won? <laughs> I'm still a little exhausted uh, from the campaign, but it feels really good. It's really exciting. I've heard from people from all different times of my life. Um, thanks to Facebook, I'm still in touch with so many people from, from college and um, even from growing up here in the area. So it's, it's just been really great. The response has been, has been incredible. Um, I'm excited to get going uh, as the mayor, which will happen in a few weeks here. But um, I don't think, I knew that no matter what happened with this election, since I had a female opponent, that whoever won would be the first woman mayor of Jacksonville Beach, but I don't think I quite absorbed what that would mean to me personally until really it was election night and I said it out loud to my friends and family and a lot of them hadn't realized it. It wasn't really a, a campaign issue or campaign topic. So when everybody kind of realized that here I am, in this history making opportunity it just really was probably the most emotional part for me um, i run the history museum here the beaches museum and so we gather you know when our archivist is asking me for signs and brochures and everything now because um because this is it's history making for jacksonville beach so i really feel like that it's just such a special thing and i'm really really proud that the voters um, gave me that honor so i'm excited to get started um, We've got a lot going on in Jacksonville Beach and all of the new council members are um, ready to go. And so we'll be getting getting going here in later in November. Um, we're not like the president who gets the January inauguration. We get straight to work, you know, other than getting everybody oriented and, and acclimated to the role and the expectations of the role, our um, council, all of the candidates ran on improving our downtown. So we've got a lot of work to do there. We've got a, a new position that will be over our downtown and, and South End community redevelopment agencies. And we're really excited to start, start to see some, some great progress there. Um, and like I said, all of the candidates, so therefore everybody who, who won a position in Jacksonville Beach was, was keenly focused on the opportunity that, that we have uh, downtown. Sweet. That's probably a much longer answer than you wanted. No, 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 it's great, it's great. Um, and I've got you all on speaker view, so I got you each in the, in the different corner. Um, and I guess I'll start with, uh, I'll start with Mayor Glasser and then we'll go Mayor Brown and Mayor Elect Hoffman. And um, I just wanna throw this question out to you. Um, we're sitting here on a Zoom call with the, all the mayors of the beaches communities, all women. What is the significance? I mean, it's, it's, it's gotta be pretty historic. Me first? Yeah. Well, it is historic. And first of all, I wanna congratulate uh, uh, Mayor-elect Hoffman on a, on a really uh, resounding win. Uh, and then of course, Mayor Brown, I've been working with her uh, for the last few years, was not opposed. Um, and, you know, we've gotten to be very close through many different crises and just working through issues between Neptune and Atlantic Beach. And, um, you know, I was thrilled to uh, be reelected this week um, to serve another term. And so, um, you know, I'm sort of used to working in a non-traditional work environment. And in today's political climate, women are getting involved more and more. Um, every day. And so, you know, maybe one day it won't be such a big deal when you have all women commissioners or council people or all, you know, or, or three beach uh, mayors that are women. But, but it is a first and it's very exciting. Um, and, you know, our cities are all a little bit different, but there are a lot of, there are a lot of areas of common ground. And so, uh, you know, we, we, as the beach mayors, we work very closely together so it's it's uh, it's very exciting um, and I just want to say I'm the mother of, of a few daughters and regardless of how campaigns go or how your political careers go for me it's about that message to the next generation my daughters are so proud of me that this is something that they might be able to aspire to do and other other young women around that see us and go wow that's kind of cool Mayor Brown well, I'll, I have to say that uh, working with these two women um, in the future, really quickly in the future, is going to be a real, real treat for me. Um, I respect both of them. I've worked with both of them, Chris, for many years, you know, in, uh, 
in her um, other careers. And uh, to see her rise, she's not a novice to, you know, being an elected official. And she's very qualified. And so this is going to be a change for her to be the mayor. But having been vice mayor and then stepping into mayor, it's uh, it's time to put on those big high heels and, and make it work <laughs> as a woman mayor. But she's very capable of it. And Mayor Glasser, who I've really, really enjoyed, especially if you can say I've enjoyed working during a pandemic with somebody, you know, that's kind of an oxymoron, if you would. But to be very honest with you, we did speak many times, several times a day. They were critical, there was critical thinking that had to be done for all three of our cities, but more important for our communities as, um, you know, a beach community. We are, um, you know, we're certainly different cities, but we are one community, as Mayor Latham has said many times, and it certainly shows during times of hurricanes and certainly during times where, you know, we have to pull together and make decisions that affect all of us. So um, hip hip hooray for three women mayors. And I also want to state that I've had uh, only men uh, for the last four years on my um, council and I have a woman that's being added uh, and Lauren McFall is coming on. And I think that's going to be great too. Uh, making strides for women is something that all three of us have been doing for a long time, promoting women. And uh, it's something now that, uh, you know, we, we don't, I think we kind of take it naturally. This is what we do. This is how we are inclusive. And this is how we support each other. And Marilex? I think that, um, I know the story here is that it's the first time we have three women mayors um, at the beaches. But for me to be able to work with mayors, Glasser and Brown, I've been watching them for years and their service to their cities and they are truly engaged. They are truly um, concerned about their communities and um, completely uh, invested in them. So for me, that's um, modeling the type of mayor that I want to be, someone who can speak with confidence about what is going on in their city, um, the issues, the triumphs, the celebrations. And so I've just always been very, very impressed by their by their leadership and by their, you know, rolling up the sleeves and, and getting really involved in things that are going on. And I think it's a, probably a lot easier and maybe a lot more fun out here in a beaches community to be able to do that. So I, I'm looking forward to joining them in that. I know there's going to be some difficult times. Um, a lot of the times when the three beaches communities come together, it's because of a challenge. Um, a certain storm that starts with H that I'm not going to mention is one of them, um, but also representing the beaches area within our county. So in, in working with the Jacksonville leadership and, and city commission, making sure that we're on the same page about the things um, that we need uh, to do um, with, through, and for um, Jacksonville, I think is really important. So for us to be, you know, we may not always agree on everything, but I think we'll be able to have a really good open communication and uh, work together uh, to represent the beaches and, and make sure that, that we're doing right by all of our communities together is gonna be really important. And I think easier for us to do in the fact that we already, already know each other and have established relationships. And I'll, um, I'll throw this out as just kind of an open question if anyone wants to, to just jump in and say something, but um, you know, through, through your time in, in public service and before going into public service, how have you seen the, the playing field shift and, and change for women? And, and I know um, it's taken uh, a lot of women and strong, powerful women to come forward and to run for positions and to, to make it known who they are and why they're running. Um, but if just anyone wants to talk to maybe how things have changed, Go for it. I'd really, I'd really like to jump in on that um, because I've been encouraging women to run for public office for many years now. Um, I have been on the um, Jacksonville City Council and I was um, in line for the presidency of the council and certainly had to win over my colleagues on there. And uh, being a woman who became, I was only the fourth woman ever in Jacksonville, Florida, that had ever been the president of the council. And so, you know, you, you, you open those doors as you go. But I'm going to say something right now that I think I've spoken to um, certainly Mayor Glasser about. But 
getting people to run for office, not just women, but getting people to run for office in an atmosphere, especially on social media, that is really um, extremely negative and at times very hateful and it affects our families and our friends and that's always but I think right now I am certainly hoping that in the future that uh, we as Americans can come together better because there is just so much negativity out there and name calling and things that keep people from wanting to run for office it keeps people out of it and um you know these women can handle it i can handle it but as we look at the future getting people to run for office men and women qualified men and women is probably going to be a challenge uh either either of you want to speak to it as well I'll go. So, uh, yes, Mayor Brown's uh, career in politics in Jacksonville has just been exemplary. Um, she's, she's one of my heroes. I come from a little bit different perspective. Uh, I started in law enforcement in the late 70s when women really weren't law enforcement officers. And what I found is uh, that women at that time, they didn't really talk about gender because they just really wanted to do the job. It's like, give me the chance to do the job. And I think over the decades, you've seen that over and over again, women have been able to step up and do these jobs and apply the critical uh, thinking skills, look at complex situations, bring people together, find ways to collaborate. And I think they probably do it in politics um, in, in a really, at a really high level. Um, and so uh, for me, it, it was really less about gender than the fact that this job, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be defined by gender. It's about doing the job and doing it well and serving people. And um, so it's funny, I look back on, on my, my life and the career that I had in law enforcement. And I think that that really prepared me to, to do this. Um, it's certainly not a job requirement that we be women, but the fact that we are um, and that we could all have three, have three mayors who are all women is, I mean, we really, we really are making a ton of progress and I'm really proud of that. Yeah. I was going to say, I think that we're seeing, um, especially locally, some more groups emerge that are willing to specifically support qualified women. And at the table is the one I'm thinking of specifically. Um, and, and one of the reasons I think it's harder for women to run is that women d aren't necessarily as instinctive on how to support other women running for office. So that's something I've pledged to do more of, um, to provide mentorship and to help support organizations that support women running for office, again, qualified women running for office, um, because there are a lot more obstacles to overcome in terms of, you know, seeing some of the things the elected officials go through. Something that was really different for me this time around versus the past two times that I ran for city council is the level of partisanship in even our local races. And our all our three city races and um, councils are nonpartisan. And I just came from a meeting where I was talking with our city manager about stop signs and water treatment plants. And I just thought to myself, well, what's the, what's the Democrat or Republican viewpoint on stop signs or water treatment plants? And there just isn't one. And so normally we can say that to our, to our constituents because they can meet us, they can see us at Publix, they can, you know, we're in the community directly with them and we're a lot more accessible than somebody who's going to DC or even, even to Tallahassee or Jacksonville. So I think that that's what I would encourage our communities to do is look at what are the community issues on how they impact the community and the people that live there and um, and let it continue to be nonpartisan because I think that that is we're really when you think about the issues that we're dealing with there there really is rarely an opportunity to to divide something down down a partisan line. Um, and I'm sure this is this is probably something that each of you would would like to speak to but um and kind of segueing right into it, but um, any any messages, any anything that you want to get out to um, to young women who who would watch this and to see um, the three of you in in the positions that you're in, um, what's something that you really want to get out that you really want to tell them? Whether it's just about um, being a woman in in the world, or whether it's about getting involved and getting civically engaged. Um, and any any of you feel free to jump in. Go for it. 
Well, I'll, I'll keep this brief, but I know for me, I only entered politics at a, at a later age. Uh, and I guess I thought I needed to be more prepared than I actually needed to be. I mean, a lot, the lot that you learn on the job and, um, is, is for these women to start, start early. Uh, get involved in civic activities, get involved in local government or, uh, you know, work on a campaign and, and uh, you know, sort of learn what, is, what it's all about. But then don't wait until you're ready. <laughs> you're ready. I mean, go ahead and start now. Um, I know, I, I think I waited, I waited too long to really start using my voice as a woman leader. Um, and uh, I, I, I don't think other women need to, to wait as long as I did. Um, I, I have to say that there was a, I had a meeting today that the community was involved in and there was a lady that brought her two little girls in there and they all, most of them looked like five, six, six, seven, somewhere in there. And uh, when she told them, uh, this is the mayor of Neptune Beach, now, I don't know what little girls think mayors do, but I have to say that these little girls were like very bright eyed about it. They had their masks on and they wanted to have a picture with me. And, and we had the picture and I gave them a hug, et cetera. And I said, now look, I hope you guys will definitely stay involved. You're here in a meeting with a bunch of adults that are making decisions about your community and your home. And I, I'm glad to see you here. And I'm very grateful that you're here, but stay involved, you know? And, and it may be that, you know, civics isn't really a part of our educational system anymore in some schools. And yet I have seen, you know, in schools that have come through city council and taken sides. We had um, a private school when I was on the Jacksonville city council that had to uh, take on whether or not a goat could stay in a neighborhood, even though goats were not allowed in that zoning, but the goat was a pet. And guess what? These young people took it very seriously. They debated it. They looked at the law and they came down and they said, it's the law, that's the zoning. But here they learn this at such a young age and it may seem silly, but it was a real serious, ghost story and they debated it well keeping um their interest is something they'll have to do although i think this um election this time has hit every family right down to the dogs and cats and uh and and so we see that uh we want i know oh, these two women want the same thing that i do and that is more citizen participation and more youth getting involved and and really making a difference in the future and mayor elect I would say, you know, whenever I speak to a group of young people, young men or young women, I, I compare the involvement in local politics to the involvement in, in federal politics and kind of the fervor around it. And at the end of the day, our cities are, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you turn on the water and it comes out clear or you walk out and your trash is being collected or the lights come on, these are all matters of local government. So it's just astonishing to me that people don't get more involved and excited uh, in that. And it's also much, much more accessible. So anyone can come to any one of our council meetings and speak to our council during public comment. So um, we've actually even had ideas that have come from some of those um, types of opportunities. We had a, um, a, a group with the middle school that came up with the idea for the, a skate park, which we've actually implemented. And we have a wonderful skate park in the south end of our beach right now. So it's really the opportunities for involvement are limitless. It just is going to take some effort on the on the part of young people and the community members, especially. And I would say, too, we have some great opportunities throughout our community, such as Leadership Jacksonville, Youth Leadership Jacksonville. Um, in our, I, I think a few of our cities have a, a community or a citizen police academy, which is a great way to learn uh, about our local police forces. And we're even working on something in Jacksonville Beach that's a citizens academy that will teach them about kind of some of the behind the scenes workings of our city that you don't always see or experience other than as the end user. Again, when that water comes on or the toilet flushes, you know, there's infrastructure here in all of our cities that, that has to do with that. So um, being on the city council have been afforded great opportunities to learn much more about all of those things. But 
it's not unique to members of the city council. Any citizen who wants to become more engaged in their community can. I would also say for young women who may aspire to be in politics or, you know, not necessarily as an elected official, but involved in policymaking, get involved on a campaign. Find someone who you believe in and, and support them and learn, you know, what it is to knock on doors and to raise money and to put out effective mailings and things like that, because that gives value to that candidate, but as well as to you uh, to learn more about how a campaign would operate and um, how you can support a woman uh, become an elected official or whatever they're aspiring to. Awesome. All right. That's kind of everything I had. Anything I, uh, anything I didn't ask that any of you wanted to address? Well, I, I'd just like to, to, to say something about the environment that we're in now. Um, since March 13th, um, Atlantic Beach has been in a state of emergency and the other beach cities are still under a state of emergency. Um, you know, I know for all of us, uh, the, the health and safety of our residents is like key in our thinking. Um, and um, I, I uh, really look forward to working with my fellow women mayors to try to get through this because we will get through this to try to sort of uh, uh, diffuse some of the tension that we see in our communities to try to bring that public engagement into City Hall and out of social media. Um, and I do think women are very well equipped to do those kinds of things. Um, and I, I, I really, I sort of challenge the two of them to, to let's, let's commit to work together to make it a, a a nicer beaches, a safer beaches, and a beaches that, that we're just gonna love uh, for our future. And I, I, I'm thrilled to work with both of you in doing that. Yeah, the only closing remark that I have to say is that communication is what all of this is about. It's communicating certainly with our constituents and certainly with each other. And certainly as we look at a, a, a view from a thousand feet, rather than just from you know your own front yard is healthier for all of us and the cooperation is what i'm really looking forward to um it's been um it's been a rough year and we're gonna hope we'll have challenges in 2021 i mean we know that you know this isn't going away come because christmas and santa claus comes it's really going to be something that's going to stay around for a while so we've got issues already facing us and communication and communicating with these two very, very qualified women is something that I know is going to be healthier for all of us here at the beach. And Marilek, anything else you wanted to? Just one other item, you know, as we've been going through this difficult year in our communities and something that, that um, my counterparts have modeled is supporting our small businesses. We have a really wonderful selection of small locally owned businesses out here at the beach. And as things were starting to shut down, I just thought about, you know, when things reopen, some of these businesses aren't going to be here. And I think that we've all made a really concerted effort to help support and promote those businesses because they are so integral to our community. They support the, our, our nonprofits, our baseball leagues, everything that, that we do in our cities. And I really have, I have been impressed to see how the cities have responded to that and how the city leadership um, has and it, on a personal and, and at a leadership level um, really worked hard to help maintain our, um, and this has nothing to do with being a woman in government, but has everything to do with preserving that really rich tapestry of our communities. And that goes across the beaches because we're all, we are all shopping and dining and, and everything in, in each other's communities. So it's so important that we maintain that, that quality of lifestyle with our small businesses. For sure. For sure. Um, all right. Well, hey, I, I appreciate all of you taking the time to do this. I know it was short notice, but um, I think this has been just, I mean, for me, even just really rewarding. And I know for any, um, any woman, any young girl who watches, this is going to be really uh, rewarding as well. So um, I appreciate all of you doing this again. Uh, congratulations to, uh, to Mary Glasser. Congrats, uh, Marilek Hoffman. And um, yeah, this is, this is really cool. Thank you. Well, thank you it's for your very cool. Thank you. Awesome. Y'all take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.